Hi guys, this is Breaker, and this time around I decided to go ahead and uh, tweak some settings before I got this cast underway. It looks like we have a Masters level PVZ underway. It's hard to say just who it's going to be between. Hold on just a second. It looks like... Ah, yes. It looks like I got the music going. Okay, everything's good, and we're ready to go. Let me, let me go ahead and give both players their introduction. Spawning is our Protoss in the upper right-hand corner. The map is Daybreak. His name is Eternity Yosh. Eternity Yosh. Yes, yes, yes. And in the lower left-hand corner, spawning is our Zerg in the purple trunks. Or is it blue? It looks blue from my perspective, yes. I give you Ona Mist. <laughs> Now the uploader did say there was a lot of back and forth, back and forth uh, um, action to it, and um, I can't really remember the uploader's name to Reddit's uh, subsection cast it, but uh, excuse me, Reddit Starcraft's subsec subsection cast it. You'll have to pardon the speech impediment that I have there. It kind of interferes with some casting, but um, I'm trying to maintain what's the word I'm looking for consistency in the casting uh, that I do is a little difficult. Yeah. Who am I kidding? I'm, I'm, I'm a small time caster. I really am. Um, I basically capitalize on the events that nobody else wants to cover. That means the Chinese scene and ooh, you know, I mean, like, that is some, uh, it's pretty some, I don't know, like, it's, it's one thing to block a hatchery, guys, but really, I mean, to get a probe to block a spawning pool, that's, that's an entirely different matter in itself, so. Round, small round of applause for uh, Yosh for successfully being able to do it. Um, it looks like, unfortunately, he's going to be encountering like maybe a short kind of supply block. Uh-oh, he actually made a mistake there, poor guy. He built that nexus too far away from the mineral line. Yeah. Question is, can he actually make up for it by maybe placing a pylon here? He's being quite annoying. And... No, he's not going to be putting a pile on there anytime soon. All right. So I guess as long as we're entering the macro phase of this game, and we do have four lings out and on the—excuse me, on the way, not out and on the way, but on the way—I um, figured I'd go ahead and fill you guys in on what I do. I basically capitalize on casting for the Chinese scene um, as well as the Taiwanese scene. No, I mean, like, uh, that's, this is a reason why nobody else wants to do this, guys. And I'll be honest with you. The whole reason why no one else wants to do this is because it's, it's extremely difficult to find a uh, gig, a tournament that will pay... Ooh, get a look at this. It's extremely difficult to find a tournament that will actually pay um, a caster that is not in their country. And, you know, there's a lot of legal... A lot of legal problems to go through with that. Um, like, how do you get paid by it? And it looks like this is the one basic misstep that we see coming from our Protoss. Sorry, guys, I wanted to cut the chat short just a little bit there. It looks like we might have a prevention on that cannon. Yeah, it's it's not going to get stopped in time. And that pylon, I don't know, like, the Lings could actually get by, but it got cancelled at the last second. It looks like we might have these lings getting oh oh one of them got surrounded just a moment ago oh my god is this gonna go I don't know there's only there's only really two lings left and no damage is actually gonna be done with them um, no real economic damage with what was left there anyway and it looks like the pylon speaking of damage it, the pylon that was here a minute ago just got taken down if we check it check losses right now it's a little high for Protoss it sets him back Fairly much, not too terribly significantly, but yeah. Anywho, back to the macro phase and back to the conversation. Or the monologue, whatever you guys would prefer to call it. I, I think it's more of a monologue than a conversation. Um, you know, I mean, the biggest problem that most casters face is, like, how do they get remuneration of any form from that? I mean, yeah, I got a Twitch partnership channel, but I can only use it to cast for tournaments. And uh, it, it's basically on the situation that I'm in. Like, you know, I can only cast, uh, like, ESL basically helped me get my Twitch partnership channel, and it's because of, of the extensive work that I've been doing with them as basically a volunteer caster. 
Um, I built my reputation that way, and uh, yeah. Whenever they have something going down, like say IEM World Championships or something like that, and they need a Chinese caster because they've got some kind of Chinese speaking talent that managed to get to the tournament, you could say they go to me sometimes. So, yeah. Biggest problem, like, I mean, that's just ESL though. ESL is completely uh, open, and I'd say it's more like um, I'm registered with these guys than anything else. And it's like, I'm on their roster. That's basically the whole reason why they, like, that's basically the whole reason why they allow me to work with them. Something I want to highlight right now from Mist is that he's oversaturated on his main and his natural. And I don't quite see the point to it just yet. Hmm. Anywho, we do have a bit of pressure coming down here at the third. And Mothership Corge is, is going to join the fray and the question is what kind of damage is going to be done here if any? I mean there's two queens here and uh, like just three links. All it takes is one link and one queen and you can deal with a zealot but uh... I don't know, one for one a queen will definitely beat a Mothership Core, and with what we see from the present state of Queen number one here versus Mothership Core here, um, well, I think it's basically a no-brainer that we're going to see the Queen win. And, uh, oh wait, this is actually kind of critical. We actually, do we, what, what is going on with our Protoss here? Okay, well, Zerg is completely aware of what's going on here. As long as he simply opens his eyes and clicks on the overlords that he has floating around here, he will know more thoroughly just what is happening. Yes, there it is. I'm thinking this is kind of a bad timing. What is going on here? Ah, here we go. I thought maybe, just maybe, we saw one of those pro mistakes, and those pro mistakes being that someone forgot to research their, uh, their blink tech. Excuse me, not their Bleak deck, but their Twilight Council deck, and this could actually be a little, a little, a little, a little critical. But right now, I think the supply difference is really where we want uh, to see Mist presently. Yes, this is ideally where Zerg should be, 20 to 30 supply above that of his opponent. Right now, we actually see Yosh as supply blocked. And the Roach and Ling numbers are substantially high, but behind this we see that uh, Yosh is teching up behind it, going into Ling Stalkers. But the question is, how, what, what the hell is Yosh going to be doing after this? It's, it's a little confusing. He's, I don't see any more pylons in production. He's actually kind of supply blocked. What is he doing? He doesn't. I, I just see a big bank building. That's it. It's like he's making a mistake or something. And, I don't know, this number of Stalkers versus this number of Roaches... I, I don't know what to say, I mean... Yosh has got to surely open his eyes and see just, like, what's going on here, like... I don't get it, I see plus two getting added on, yes, but that's that's supplementary, that's beside the point. He should be taking another Expo, and there it is. Okay, I was about to say, I was a little concerned, really, what, what on earth could he really be doing? And um, Blink is actually nowhere near done in time to deal with these Roaches, but fortunately for Yosh, um, Stalkers, excuse me, the Roach speed upgrade has not been completed. That would be Glial Reconstitution. And it looks like, you know, he, he was looking for a timing of some sort. And it, it was never even started, the Glial Reconstitution upgrade? Yeah. Never once was started. And it looks like uh, we have Mist basically poking away and seeing exactly what Yosh has planned. So behind all of this, I think we see Mist possibly going with some sort of a planned all-in. If not, definitely a kill on the third. It's not going to be an immediate all-in. No, 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 it can't be. It can't be. But the sentries here, oh my god. If the force fields are good, then they will put these roaches in a position where they cannot attack these stalkers. Just like so, yes. Very surgical use of force fields by Yosh. Right now the supply difference is 150 to 94. And I'm just curious how, you know, how is Yosh gonna hold? He's, he's basically first forced to burn more force fields right here. And the roaches look like they're gonna get at least a snipe on this third. You know, the, the stalkers, only, only three or four of them can actually hit any of the roaches right here. And the nexus falls. 
but it's the roaches getting away right now that is the big problem for Mist. Um, later stages of the game, it would have been maybe okay to throw away that many roaches, but presently it is not. We have to see immediate retaliation from Yosh. Otherwise, you know, just I think we're gonna see his income suffer if we just check the income right now. It's you know we have a Zerg player that's going for his fourth, and he's already got you know he's already miles ahead on his income compared to our Protoss here. We do have an Immortal in the mix now, so that's going to make a world of difference in the engagements. If we just check and see the energy on these on these uh, sentries, it's not quite enough to make too many force fields. It's borderline enough to make one wave, and that is it. And I'm wondering, just does Mist have his eyes open right now? Is he aware of this? The biggest problem I see with Mist is he's forgetting one of the most basic upgrades, and that is Glyo Reconstitution. Speaking of, he just got it started. And this one force field actually costed Mist maybe, I want to say, it, it looked like half a dozen roaches he lost there. There we go. Oh, but this, this is gonna cost this the game like that supply block. You know, there's just nothing, there's no really coming back from any of this, I feel. I mean, he's not supply block yet, sure, he's got like a huge window, but after these roaches fall, I don't think we're gonna see this be able to hold on for much longer. I mean, it's once those, once those overloads get chased down. Uh, but Yosh, Yosh is Unfortunately, not quite that what, what's the word I'm looking for. Proactive in his mindset. He's actually looking to basically contain an attack, contain an attack, contain an attack. There we go. And the lings are coming back around for us around. Uh oh, and oh my god. Come on! Get that surrounded. Uh it just doesn't seem to be working out for Mist quite yet. Bio Reconstitution almost finished, it is now finished. Time warp going down, trying to deny the escape by those roaches. But the one thing I really want to see as a Zerg player is of many, many, many more links coming into the mix. Because presently what we see from our Protoss is not enough zealots to actually deal with that number of links. They could be ready to warp in on a whim, but speaking of units warping in, we actually have Colossi entering the battle. This you know, amazingly enough, not taking any economic damage. The biggest problem is he's not putting that uh, hatchery in the upper left-hand corner of the map on his hotkeys. And it looks like we have a full-blown surround here. The Immortal getting targeted down. Oh no, and the Roach is taking free damage as they try desperately to get those last few shots in. It doesn't work. And where is that Colossus? It did just come out and join us on the map. There it is. Alright, so here it is. Like, the question is, who's going to prevail over here? I mean... Presently, we have both players on an even number of bases, basically, at least in terms of mining. But right now, one thing that we need to see, eternity, excuse me, one thing that we really need to see from Mist is to seriously kick on the crank out larva mode. Here we go. There we go again. Oh my god, the zealots actually, did you see this? This is brilliant. This is the 100 mineral force field, if you will. Actually, Few hundred oh, field. But oh, this, this looks like it's not gonna go in favor of Mist at all whatsoever. As a Zerg player, he you never want to be below your opponent in terms of supply, and there's the GG from Mist. He just realized, oh great, I screwed up. It was my composition. I knew what I did wrong there. Alright guys, so this has been Breaker. If you guys liked what you saw today, just go ahead and click on the subscribe button to this YouTube channel. I my specialty is covering the scene that nobody else wants to, the China and Taiwan scene. I'll see you guys next time.